Hello there again, minions. It's Wheezy. Today we're back in Gran Turismo 7, and I decided I wanted to jump into some more online races, and race A this week is an exciting Toyota Prius race. So I figured, what the hell? <laughs> Let's jump in a little half battery powered electric car and do some high speed mixing it up. So this is on Tokyo Expressway, and since I'm not super familiar with this track, uh, the first thing that I obviously want to do is jump in and get some practice laps. So I'm going to jump into the qualifying time trial and see what kind of pace I'm on. The best laps in the world right now are 142. I'm not expecting to get anywhere near that, um, but basically just want start to start getting in the ballpark. It actually in the top 50 drops off into the 143s, so... Um, a, a pretty decent spread off the top. So I'm gonna jump in a rented Prius and do some hot laps and just see where we can start out. So the first couple of laps of this are gonna be re-familiarizing myself with the track. I think a few weeks ago actually there was a time trial on this course. So I actually know the layout decently well, but it's going to take me, you know, some time to reacquaint myself and learn the braking points and the turn-in points for this particular car. And uh, as you'll see, there's a few corners that end up being kind of tricky. This first one is not super tricky, but you have to, to be able to maximize your speed coming out of it, you've got to brake just enough going in that you can make that turn in. Um, this one should be flat out every time, although I'm kind of like relearning that uh, starting out. And then some other critical turns uh, going into this lap. Uh, I'll point out on this first lap and then we'll see how I improve. But as, as always in this game, you know, the basics of driving are important. But when it comes to the racing lines, right, what you're really trying to figure out is your lines, your braking points, your turn end points, and how much speed you can carry through. This turn is actually quite tricky because you can carry a good amount of speed through it. But since there's that elevation change where it's coming uphill and then it flattens out, if you brake after it flattens out, the car gets really unhappy and really light uh, and can cause some issues. So as I would learn, the best, most stable strategy for me was to brake coming into that just a little bit to be able to accelerate through. This one, I need to start a little bit wider on the outside to come in. You can carry quite a bit of speed through here. So losing that isn't gonna be as great uh, for going uphill, especially in a low power car like this. And then once you come out of the tunnel, this entire section should be flat out. So as I go through and, and improve through the series of races as well as the qualifying, you'll see how that, that uh, changes. But basically you're, you should be flat out coming through here. Uh, brake coming to this. This turn is actually deceptively hard. A lot of people will slam off walls here. Um, as you'll see there, you can actually get quite a bit of contact off barriers in this daily race A because there's not strict penalties on that. If you slam into the walls really hard, you'll see, you get, you'll get some penalties. Um, but if you just slam into them somewhat soft, <laughs> you will not get a lot of penalties. So my first lap is an, a messy, penalized, invalidated two minutes and three seconds. So clearly I'm way off the pace. But again, each time I'm gonna do a lap, I'm gonna get more familiar with how I'm doing this. Typically the way it'll work on my subsequent laps is I'll end up cautiously over braking for turns where I overran them and then just kind of optimizing uh, from there. So fast forwarding to the beginning of my sixth practice lap, you can actually see my times have been not very consistent slash had some additional penalties. My fastest lap as of right now is a 153.3, um, but I'm still kind of learning out the corners. So this is my first lap really starting to put together the pieces and you can see I'm coming down to this uh, first line flat out uh, having a good run not coming off those corners uh, slamming into the walls there's a big thing that you want to avoid and so we'll just kind of watch as I go into this lap and see where I've kind of cleaned it up I got my braking a little bit on the top there so I'm, my car is more stable I'm leaving a whole lot of speed still on that I could accelerate a lot faster through that it'll probably be after my second race or so before I really got that corner um, pretty solid but I did want to kind of wrap this up and get into a race so coming through here you do need a little bit of braking coming into the tunnel uh, you want to try and turn and hit that apex I'm wide of the apex here but still manage not to go into the wall 
need a good break coming into this. You want to touch this inside apex going up the hill so you can be flat out from there. Once you're back on the throttle here, it should be flat out through this entire section. Um, I lifted there a little bit, which again is me still learning, so still lo losing some time there. Um, lifting there a little bit again, but you'll see by the time I uh, get through this that that's, uh, that section's flat out. Braking coming into this so that I don't go off that wall. Aiming for that inside apex, going a little bit wide of it. Not very clean. The tire squealing typically means I'm le losing uh, some time, leaving some time on the track there, so that's not ideal. Uh, but a better line coming through this final turn. So accelerating off the, the uphill section, cross the line, and a new best, 150.9. You can see down there my optimal, if I put all of my best sectors together at this point, would be a 150.8, which is still not great. I mean, I'm eight seconds off the fastest laps in the world, um, but I haven't been in a race yet, so I'm not really sure what a good race pace is for someone at my level. I think I'm still at a, a driver rating of D or something like that because I have not played many online races. But uh, anyway, a, a good lap uh, in the learning process and getting towards the end of feeling comfortable enough with the track to be able to jump into a race. So fast forwarding again to the end of my ninth lap, you can see my previous laps after that 150.9, we're a 151, 151. Not super consistent, um, but starting to put the pieces together, get consistently into the low 150s. This one comes in as new personal best, 150.6. And I think I drove this lap until I made a little mistake and then stopped. But that's what I decided uh, was good enough to move forward into the races Personal best so far, 150.6. Let's see where that lines up for an actual race. But before jumping into the race, the most important thing for any online race is to make sure that you have a beautiful library to take online to show off to other people. And since I don't own the Prius, I can't put a custom library on it unless I go and buy it, so I decided to head over to the Toyota dealership, buy myself the most appropriate colored Prius I could think of, boring ass white, and then taking it over to the marketplace, the showcase, and picking out a good livery for it. So the livery I ended up settling on was this. A Fast and Furious mashup of Brian's cars from Fast and Furious 1 and Too Fast, Too Furious. Beautifully duct taped together down the middle by some green gaffer tape. Uh, <laughs> really kind of loved the hilarious design and the concept of a Prius with Fast and the Furious uh, designs on it. So decided to take that into the online race and see if I could intimidate my competition with this beautiful Toyota Prius. So for my first race, it would turn out that my 150.6 was good enough for P2. If you'll notice in the chat here, let's have a clean race from HCC. That'll come in quite interesting, not too long into the race. So take note of that. But let's jump into daily race A with my Fast and Furious duct taped Toyota Prius. So a blistering start as we come screaming off the line in our extremely exciting battery-powered monsters. Starting in P2, dropping in line behind first place HCC, who I mentioned before from the pregame chat. Coming down into the first turn, braking, coming in, trying not to hit this far wall. One thing you'll notice in this initial race is perhaps the sound of lots of people slamming into walls. Uh, myself included, honestly. Uh, but this first out lap, basically just trying to not make any mistakes, uh, take what I've learned, continue to basically increase my lap times by working on where I know I'm losing time on some of these turns, and just trying to, to not make any major mistakes and lose touch with P1. So, coming uphill here, little break coming into that, I'm a little far inside, so I turn in, not on the gas, or you can see the car in front of me getting loose, that is what happens when you try to break after that. So even though I don't know if my line is the fastest line, braking earlier, I know it is more stable. So because I accelerated slow out of that corner, I'm not able to capitalize as much as I should have been able to on that. Braking a little too much into this, but I still 
get fixated on the car in front of me, and even though I braked enough for that turn, I just followed him into the wall, uh, still maintaining my gap behind him, currently a little under a half second behind, a little over a half second now, uh, trying to follow him through. So as we come around the last turn from, uh, oh no, coming down into the uh, flat out section, sorry, not the, not the last turn yet. See, still, still learning the track. Uh, breaking coming into this turn, the game knows he's going to slam it, so it ghosts him for not breaking enough. He's going to get a one and a half second penalty here. This is going to come into play, but I managed to break just enough into that turn that I, even though I hit the wall, I didn't get a penalty for it. I wasn't like wall riding as far as the game was concerned. So now I know as long as I stay close to him, I'm only about a second behind here. As long as I can have a clean line and stay with him until the deceleration zone, it should be an easy pass. Uh, when he has to serve that penalty, in which case his car will de decelerate for a second and a half, which is significant, especially when I'm less than a second behind. He manages not to go into the wall in that turn. It's a cleaner line for me, but still leaving some, some speed on the, on the track there. He pushes that a little wide. I'm flat out coming through here. I know I can gain some time in this, having a good line going flat out downhill through here. And I've closed the gap to less than half a second three-tenths of a second, the car behind me, another four and a half seconds back. So they've been slamming into walls, so it's kind of a two-horse race right now. He's, I'm getting that warning that he's about to go in the slowdown zone, so I just want to make a clean turn here. He breaks again, loses stability, so I'm going for the overtakes. He has to slow down. And this motherfucker who asked for a clean race literally slams into me while he's serving a penalty to keep me from passing. And you'll see in the replay, I'll even show you the replay, while I was counter-steering into his push, he ghosted out, and that made me oversteer into the corner. So he ends up regaining the lead because I lost so much momentum. So fucking frustrating. Ugh. So now what should have been me taking the lead easily and driving off into the distance has now brought the cars that were four and a half seconds behind directly behind me, less than two tenths, into direct competition as I'm now trying to chase this asshole down, making some mistakes out of flusteredness and frustration. But I've got a car all over my butt now, as the guy who I should have passed is now the one driving off into the distance. Extremely frustrating. This is kind of, I guess, what you have to deal with when you're in these lower level lobbies for now. But yeah, frustrating that uh, instead of cruising away in P1 right now. I'm still in P2, but now fighting guys that I had run four and a half seconds away from. So fast forwarding now to the final lap. I have fallen to three and a half seconds basically behind the leader. You can see he's got the fast lap at a 150 dead. My fastest lap so far is a 150.7. So he is paced faster than me up there right now. Although part of that has been mistakes from my frustration. Um, but still the cars behind me uh, are pushing hard. Uh, as I'm coming down through this downhill section. Still trying to gain on the leader. Maybe not focused as much as I should be on defending my position from the cars behind. But as of right now, I've been run pretty clean laps. Coming uphill, braking a little bit here. You can hear the cars going into the walls. This guy does not brake early. This is kind of the risk of that early braking point he's able to cruise by. He does have a one and a half second delay, so I should be able to pass him again. So him going a little bit harder into some of those barriers kind of cost him when he's kind of making benefited, making up some time sliding through there. Um, but again, I'm not having the cleanest laps to create the gap that I should be. Um, so he's fallen to seven tenths behind, six tenths, and I make a big mistake here, overcook this turn, lose a lot of momentum coming uphill by tapping that wall, and now he's breathing down my neck. He's gonna make a move to my left. I should have protected the left since it's the inside on this turn. But he got out there, so I'm not going to, you know, be a douche like this other guy was and force him out. I'm going to leave him space, but now he's on the inside of this turn. I've got no choice, really, but to try and make this a clean turn. I do not touch the apex at all, and I hit the wall. Just sloppy racing for me. He cleanly takes that position. That is a good overtake. Well earned, going into, heartbreakingly, the final turn of the final lap. So instead of P1 or even P2, I'll be finishing a disappointing... P3 behind HCC, who wanted a clean race, and G Funky, <laughs> who overtook me fair and square. Frustratingly, HCC's 
safety rating or sportsmanship rating actually went up despite his driver rating going down so if he, that was the thing although even though i think this race says driver rating isn't affected so really good safe racing from hcc <laughs> So heartbroken but undeterred, I jumped into the next race uh, during the qualifying time, decided to try and improve my qualifying lap. My first lap was a 148.8, then another 148.8, so you can see more consistent coming through here. I find some extra time on my next lap, and so you'll see it's just my line overall has gotten a lot better. Staying flat out coming down through the downhill section, coming into this first tunnel area. And just overall, the extra laps I've had in this car, on this track, uh, you'll see that they're starting to pay off and I'm starting to put together uh, a better line. So coming uphill, still relying on this little bit of break here. Um, I'm still waiting too long to get back on the gas there, I think. So leaving still some speed on that turn, but having more stability coming through there as I've seen other cars get unstable, trying to break late over the hill in that one. Coming down into the downhill section through the tunnel breaking into that looking for the apex still a little wide probably breaking more than need to definitely more speed to be gained there by coming in on that apex harder and faster if you know what i mean getting a good run into the uphill section i had to lift a little bit there which isn't ideal you should be flat out coming basically when you start accelerating out of the tunnel be able to go flat out up the hill but still an improvement on my most recently set best time uh coming down through the tunnel again Breaking into this hard turn, lots of people like to come off the wall in this turn. I'm really trying to figure out my braking point so that I can get a good run accelerating off of that. Coming up into this final turn, a little bit of brake there to be able to accelerate through the apex. Get as much speed as you can coming out of this long straight through the start-finish line. And from my 148.8, I've improved to a 147.8, so almost a full second. Cut off my best time which should, you know, set me up better for the next race. So with my new best, 147.8, that was, well, for a second, yeah, yeah, enough for P2 in this higher lobby. So my previous best of a 150.6 would have put me down in about P7 in this lobby. So somewhat encouragingly, I've not only set a better time, but I appear to also be in a better lobby. So even though I'm not far and ahead, you know, P1 with this time, the P1 lap being one over a second, second and a half ahead of me, this Canadian with his wonderful time there. Um, so I'll be starting P2, but against a better set of drivers and hopefully a cleaner set of drivers. So let's jump into this second race and see how I do with my new faster lap and increased experience. A friendly cacophony of Prius horns on the start line. I need to map my horn to a better button on my wheel. As the race is getting ready to start, Clean start, screaming off the line. Here we go, race number two, starting P2 behind the Canadian, K. Vanderster. Let's see what I can do against a driver who obviously did set a significantly faster lap than I did for qualifying. Heading down into the first downhill section. He's still honking his horn, or maybe the guy behind me, I don't know. I, off this initial launch, I still did my breaking point going to this first turn, which cost me because I do not need to do that from the starting line on a hot lap, yes, it needs a little bit of braking, but from the grid start, should just be flat out through that first turn. Lesson learned, mistake to me, but still not losing much time. Four tenths behind the Canadian. Uh, Gus behind me, three tenths, as the audio from these crazy Prius is distorted strangely. A little break coming in here, worried that I'm going to get the guy behind me coming through that inside line, but he decides he's going a little too fast. Runs it into the outside wall. Not a great run by the Canadian coming out of that first turn. So I'm getting the line here, getting a run on him. He's leaving space. Respect being shown here. Breaking down into the tunnel. I actually did not break early enough. Luckily did not go into the Canadian, um, but still hit the wall. Getting a run up the hill. Now in P1, and I just cook it way too wide. Gonna lose a ton of momentum by hitting that wall coming uphill. Another rookie ass mistake. So here comes the Canadian with a good run up the hill since he didn't hit the wall coming up. And a clean overtake back into P1. I am just kicking myself for taking first on a clean turn and then immediately giving it up by slamming into a wall. The car behind me hard into the barrier. Coming up that hill, overcooks it trying to catch up. 
clean line for me and the Canadian. The Canadian ghosting, meaning he's going to be overcooking this. Although, I think he managed... No, he does go into the wall. The game anticipating he was coming too fast into that and ghosting him out. So I get another good run coming on across the start-finish line. I go for the inside line. He's going to leave space. Clean racing so far. Uh, oh, wait. This is not the inside line. Uh, so I got to leave him room coming across instead of cutting into that inside apex. Being respectful on my racing line. He's going to get right back ahead, so I'm going to fall in behind him. Overcooking a little bit coming into this downhill section, but I should have gone to the actual inside line instead of the outside inside line. So the Canadian back into P1. Uh, ne nearest car behind, only one second behind, so not out of the race by any means. I'm still a little nervous about my breaking point on this line. The Canadian keeps it clean through there. I leave quite a bit of speed on, lose some momentum by going into the wall there. Unfortunate. I'm just still kicking myself for not being able to keep my clean laps, being consistent on this, as now the Canadian's starting to pull uh, upwards of a second ahead. So I'm gonna have to try and clean up my laps and see if I can start to close this gap. Spoiler alert, I do not close the gap. In fact, by the end of the fourth lap, the Canadian has opened up the gap to three and a half plus seconds, and then I've opened the gap behind me to four seconds, so a rather uneventful P2 at least, not P3 this time, coming across, and a decent showing marred by some silly mistakes. So I'm feeling pretty confident, ready to do a couple of more qualifying laps, see if I can improve my time even more and try my luck in a third race, but a clean race uh, and just overall a, a decent result. So into my third qualifying session, I've already uh, had a couple of consistent first laps. I haven't yet beat my best currently 147.8, but coming around on this lap, I will beat that with a 147. 0.7, so a small improvement of about a tenth. But this next lap will be my best qualifying lap. I only have a minute 47, basically, left in qualifying, which means if I set a new personal best, I should get it in just under the wire before the end of qualifying. So here we go. Coming downhill, clean turns so far, uh, trying to keep this flat out learning everything that I have a little bit off the pace from my previous lap, which is, to this point, my best lap, but still close within six hundredths of a second. Breaking just before the crest here, and then accelerating up into this turn, clipping the apex, accelerating out. This did not quite push me all the way wide, so I still left some speed on that turn there. I'm actually now two tenths behind my best lap. Not looking great so far, but still a clean lap good practice regardless. Little braking coming down in the tunnel, looking for that inside apex, accelerating out to the wide side. Ah, touch the wall. Not good, so I'm not thinking this is going to be much of an improvement at all. But for whatever reason, the extra speed I carry from that wall bump coming uphill, suddenly I'm one-tenth, almost two-tenths ahead of my best time. So a little bit of wall running apparently has helped me out there. Coming back downhill into this turn, and all of a sudden, I've gone from quite a bit behind to a decent amount ahead. My current optimal based on my best uh, best sectors all around, a 147 dead. Um, not going to put that together on this one, but let's see what we can do. Now, four tenths ahead, a half second ahead coming through this final turn. Accelerating to the line, eight seconds left in qualifying session. Coming across the line to five seconds left, and it is a 147.2. But then... Qualifying in suddenly, even with several seconds left. And my final qualifying time, a 147.7. It did not count my new best lap. But still enough for P1 in this lobby. The 147.7 and the 147.2. Both would have been good enough for the P1. But a frustrating loss of my best lap. But looking like we're in maybe not as strong a lobby as the last one. Um, getting some positive messages in the chat here. Although once again... Someone saying, let's have a clean race. That didn't work out very well for me the last time. Especially when it was someone close to me on the grid, so... 
I'll be keeping my eye on you, Fufu Monkey 4, looking for this clean race. But let's jump into it and see how it goes. The anticipation is intense, waiting to come off the line. And they're off! A extremely silent start with Tokyo Expressway shining in the darkness as Brian O'Connor's beautiful cut in half Prius accelerates downhill, leading a long line of cars into what's hopefully going to be his first victory. Coming downhill into the first series of corners, maintaining P1, let's not have any mistakes, turning in, no lift, full speed, hearing some crashing into the barriers behind me, that's what I want to hear. Cars behind me, having mistakes, me running a clean race. Three tenths is the lead to number two so far. Accelerating up here, trying to stitch together a clean line. Not let the pressure get to me as my heart's starting to race a little bit. My braking point here a little early. You can see they got car behind closing in a little bit. That part's making me nervous. He's going to have to brake later. Oh, I push it wide, but do not rub on the corner. But he gets a better run. He's looking up the left-hand side here. What are we going to do? This is actually the inside line coming into this right-hand turn. He's side by side, which means I cannot cut inside that line to my full turn, and I rub it on the wall. He does too. We both overcook it. Me because I'm leaving him room, him because he's going for the overtake. So into first, it's a clean overtake. Uh, again, I need to find better speed or a more consistent breaking point coming through that second corner. So now he's ahead, opened up as I've come off that wall. Again, kicking myself for a stupid mistake. But a second gap to the leader. Already up to almost two seconds behind, so hopefully this is going to be a number one and two race. Let's see. Coming around here, keeping a clean line, breaking in. He's ghosted, so I think he's going a little fast. He's probably going to hit that outside wall. But he doesn't. He manages to keep the speed, so I don't actually gain any time on him, even though the game was scared enough by it. Although the gap is shrinking, so I did apparently get a better run than him. He probably had to break to keep off the wall, and I was able to accelerate up through it. Coming back down into the series of turns. A little break coming through here. Trying to get more speed from this. Accelerating out. Trying not to hit that wall. A nice clean line. Cutting it down to a second. Flat out through here. I know that I'm a little bit faster from him. I from the coming down here through the first lap. So that gap is coming down. 7 tenths. The gap to the car behind. 2.6 and increasing. So looking like, good, like a good opportunity for this race. If I can get a clean overtake. Keep a clean race. Not make more mistakes. My braking spot. I'm hoping he's going to get loose braking through here. He keeps it pretty tidy. I'm accelerating out of the turn. Let's see if I can run it wide. He's still a little bit loose. So it is definitely unsettling other people's cars by taking that later braking point. And I'm able to close that gap. I'm right up on his bumper now. Two tenths. I decide to move it to the outside line just so I can get a faster line through here. He overcooks it on that inside line into the wall. I'm going to get a decent run here if I can cut to this inside apex and get a flat out run. I have to lift because I do not get a good line through there. If I had managed to clean up that line, I would have had a clear run straight up through here, kicking myself again for a unforced error. Accelerating down here. Now the gap is back to nine tenths nearly. Looking for a good line coming up here. Hopefully he overcooks it into the far wall. I get that inside apex. He doesn't. He's loose. He hits the wall. Once again, I'm going to get a good run coming up again here. Gonna get a clean break here, try to come towards this inside apex and get a good run so I can accelerate on this straight. I do not get a great line and I kiss the outside wall. Not the cleanest and most beautiful racing. So even though having mistakes and honestly bigger mistakes from the car ahead of me, from Mr. Fufu Monkey, I'm not able to capitalize by making smaller mistakes while behind. A decent line coming through here, definitely leaving some speed into that turn. Flat out through here, once again, knowing that I'm faster than him through this complex by being able to keep it flat out and a tighter line. So closing the gap here yet again, six tenths, five tenths, under half a second. We're gonna hope for another mistake or at least an opportunity for a clean overtake. I got a way better run coming down this time than him. Way down to two tenths, taking my early braking line. Hope he's gonna get unsettled coming through here. Accelerate through the apex. Try not to put it into the wall again, but I do have to lift for that a little bit. So, not the fastest corner I could have taken through there. 
This would be an opportunity where I could go back and watch one of the faster cars line, see how they're handling that turn to get some extra time. I've just been kind of winging it myself. He really overcooks into the wall. I get some target fixation there, almost going to the wall myself. He moves to the inside, and I manage to overtake easily. I do have to lift coming up the hill so I don't go into the wall, which is going to cost me some momentum. But four tenths behind, closing it a little bit, but I should have enough momentum that he's not going to be able to come back and re-overtake immediately. And three tenths ahead, comfortably into P1 right now. Now to just keep it clean and maintain this position, going for that inside apex, trying to maximize speed without running wide. He tries to get that outside run, puts it into the wall. He's going to lose quite a bit of momentum by doing that. Maybe a little overly cautious coming through this turn. I want to make sure that I can accelerate out and I get a good run. No walls hit. Five tenths, six tenths lead coming in here, coming into the final lap. Looking like an opportunity for a P1 if I can just not fuck it up. I touch the wall for no reason coming into that quarter, but do manage to get a good line accelerating out. A little bit of damage done though. He's closing it to three tenths. Flat out through this. I know I'm faster than him through this section. Although he seems to be falling right behind me, so maybe he's gotten faster by just keeping flat out and following my line. He's going to try and put some pressure on me. Coming up to a big right-hander. So if I were more seasoned, I might want to make sure that I'm covering this inside right hand. Uh, but instead, I'm going to try and maintain my line and just get maximum speed. He cuts inside, so I have to be careful. And he slams into me. Now that is unfortunate because I wanted to leave him room since he was cutting inside. But he did overcook it and actually pins me into the wall a little bit coming through. So not a clean overtake from him. Another disappointing loss into P2. But what's this? I'm seeing I'm seeing taillights. I'm seeing flashing lights in front. Could it be? Does Fufu Monkey 4 actually respect a clean race? Did he maybe realize that that overtake was a little too hot? He does. He slows down, lets me go past. I'm not entirely certain if he just wanted to be nice and sportsmanlike for having a bit of a lunge into that overtake, or if maybe he just didn't want to be that far ahead and mix it up. I'm not taking a chance. I'm taking that overtake with him letting off the momentum, and I'm not going to slow down and make it a competitive race again. I'm just going to try and have a clean last couple of turns and go ahead and accept P1 from this, because honestly, it felt like I had the better race. I had the cleaner laps. His overtake was a lunge and a bit rough. But across the line, minute 50 for my final lap. P1, Wheezy taking the win over Fufu Monkey 4, who could have easily run away after that overtake with the victory, but displaying incredible sportsmanship. This is what I'm looking forward to with advancing into the higher lobbies. People who, if they make mistakes, aren't going to be D-bags about it. P1 victory for Wheezy. An incredible result <laughs> in the mighty Fast and Furious Prius. Okay, minions, hopefully you enjoyed those exciting Toyota Prius races in Daily Race A. If you guys enjoyed that, you guys can leave me a like. If you didn't like watching me stumble around in a hybrid, you can leave me a dislike. <laughs> Subscribe if you're new around here. I got all kinds of good stuff going on. I'm having a lot of fun playing games lately, so... Be sure to subscribe if you're new to see awesome stuff from me. Great sportsmanship in this race. Sending positive vibes back to Mr. Fufu Monkey after he asked for a clean race. Gave a clean race despite a mistake on his part. And ultimately, great victory was Wheezy's. I will see you guys in the next one.